What's up YouTube family? Isn't that what we have to say when you're starting a YouTube video? Apparently it's the law. Not much has happened on this 2.30 for the last couple of weeks, partly because I was working away for a long weekend. I did make a video on the road while I was doing that, partly to fill the time really. I'm not quite sure it's exciting enough to actually bother uploading, but maybe I'll do it later in the week. I don't know. If you like long, interesting scenes of the motorway vanishing into the distance, let me know and I will upload it. And also the weather has been appalling. You have probably seen it. The old grey, oh, the old grey, the new grey Mercedes nearly drowned in a flood. Um, which is quite epic and I really wished I hadn't driven into it. Um, but the car survived, which is lucky. But um, yeah, the weather was pretty bad. I'm fed up with the car being on the ramps. I've finished doing all the pipe work underneath it for now, or the fuel pipes anyway. But one thing I do want to do while it's still up in the air is fix this hole in the spare wheel well, because that is not great. It's very possible this car might get trailed off to Trevor's at some point and then he will make it run and stick an MOT on it. So if I can weld up any holes in it, get everything else ready to go, then at least it's less for me to pay for when it's on his time. So without further ado, which is apparently another thing you have to say on YouTube, um, let's go and get the welding kit and um, plug up a hole. Right, so first up, so I'm not welding into flammable stuff, to empty the boot, which is a fairly sensible starting point mostly engine components that came with the car. The remaining good bits of the locks, if anyone needs a door handle with a lock, complete with matching uh, glove box key. And actually I need to change this as well. I've forgotten. I do have a working or matching lock for the boot. If I can figure out how that comes out. Do you think I should be worried about how much oil there appears to be over the side of this fan shroud? That side dry, that side wet with oil. I'm sure it's fine. Mm. Well, that's actually a really good tire. And it's completely flat and at least 15, probably 20 years old, but that's a brand new tire. Might just switch this with one of the ones on the car. <clears throat> it's not a brand I've ever heard of, Formula S. Have you ever heard of Formula S? That's gotta be like the cheapest tire money can buy, but I mean, look, it's still got the printing on the, on the rubber. It is kind of damp in there, which is less good. There. Yuck. Much, much horridness. Oh God, that's full of water. The boot wasn't quite as watertight as I thought maybe it was. Right, so this is the spare wheel well, which is a little bit damp, teeny bit crusty, and only one little little hole. Well, it should be bigger once I put a grinder over it. I thought I was gonna have to undo the, uh, the tow bar, but it looks like I can leave that in place for now. Not that I'll have a tow with the thing, but it'll leave big holes when I cut it up. Oh, here's something new. So if the camera will focus on this, this is a new thing I've just found. A car sticker for Star FM 107.9 FM. I have never heard of Star FM and I don't know where they are. I'll try and Google them before I go online, but if anyone's heard of them, stick it in the comments. Might give me some clues to this car's history. Now, I actually took today off so I could try and get as much work done in this car as possible. But unfortunately I had to send a bunch of emails, finish some work up was going to do over the weekend. It's actually three o'clock now. I've not even started doing anything to this car yet. It's basically why this takes so long. Maybe one day this YouTube channel will take off to the point that I can actually have a couple of days a week set aside to doing stuff to these cars and I can get so much more done. That would be lovely. was a rubber bung which is basically held in by very old underseal. Okay so basically what I've got here is some rubbery old goop underseal of, of some kind. It's like a rubberized coating. 
it's tearing off, but it goes underneath these straps for the tow bar, so that is going to have to come off, which I think is going to mean coming off with an angle grinder because those bolt heads don't look good at all. So using a 14mm ratcheting spanner as a clamp to stop these wires, which I have recently repaired, falling into the line of fire. Let's just cut these damn things out and be done with it. It's starting to wish I struggle with the spanner after all. One down. Well, two down. This is basically hanging by the uh, under seal and these two up here on the side. I think when I cut these off, that's just gonna go straight to the floor. Let me keep my toes clear. Still not be there. How is this not falling off already? Oh, there's two big bolts on the back. Still two massive bolts on the back of it that are holding it steady. There's 18 millimeter nuts on them which were captive when I started and they're not anymore. There's no way I can get a spanner up inside there. Oh man, and because this valance has been whacked with something, I'm gonna have to go and hit there with a hammer to try and free that. Look at this, it's kind of actually torn through the steel. This, where it's curling up, means I can't get a socket up onto that. So I'm gonna whack this with a hammer, see if I can uh, reshape it enough. God, I'm pretty much body shop trained here. This is awesome. Quite well, new. You'd never know. Right. Let's get a socket on it. See if this one will actually turn at all. Damn it. <clears throat> no, it's turning as well. Damn. That's awkward. This is a big ass bracket down here. Oh, I wish I'd started this at nine o'clock this morning instead of doing actual work I'd get paid for. Oh, dear me. I think I might need a new cutting disc. I'll be honest, this is a bigger hole than I was expecting. Considering I thought it'd be something about the size of a small apple, this is a bit disappointing. Now I'm trying to take the rubbery under seal stuff off with a wire brush. This is gonna be messy. Just had an aha moment. The tow hook itself unbolts with 24 mil bolts and then these fall off. Meaning I can actually get access. Or not. Or not. Maybe easier said than done. I never like my shins anyway. I'm going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Luckily, 15 sixteenths of an inch is close enough to 24 millimeters. That big ass spanner will fit on the back of there. And I can wrench this thing around. Okay, let's try this way around instead, see if that works. Well, good news. By wedging this 15 sixteenths spanner against the tow bar, the tow hitch itself, and using a length of scaffold pole, Excuse me. After leaving the uh, big bolts in WD-40 overnight, they are finally, I wouldn't go as far as to say loose, turning. Which means I can get those straps off the bottom of the boot. Unfortunately, after that, I will have to go to work. <clears throat> so, you'll see more rusty floor holes on this Mercedes later in the week but I thought I'd give you a midweek update ouch to let you know what's going on with this thing and frankly it's worse than I thought but isn't it always one giant bolt ah 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 so this is how I left it last night obviously before I took those straps off of the tow bar I couldn't get I couldn't go all the way around grinding the under seal off because the straps are in the way now those are free I can 
keep on grinding this back and get a better look at how far the rust does actually go because in some places I found there's more perforation that's being hidden by the um, by the rubbery under seal. Uh, so I will do that, not now, I was going to do it this morning but I've actually got to go and get changed to get in the car and drive to Coventry which is about three hours from here so I will do that. Maybe I'll get some time tomorrow I can do that. But I've sprayed it with zinc so during the thunderstorms which are predicted today since this is some of the um the holes that i couldn't see because it was all being held together by under seal i don't like leaving jobs half undone for example a car that won't start for a year sorry um on a video and leaving it hanging but this this has escalated from a little couple of hour job that i can do in an afternoon and do a video for you and bung it up to being something that's actually quite a lot of work i'm going to have to come back to this later in the week and hopefully I'll post up a second video by the weekend with some more progress. I realise this bit is completely pointless but having just cut this out of the floor of the boot I'm going to try and cheer myself up by seeing if this brand new Formula S tyre holds air. I've never heard of Formula S but that sounds like something from Arrested Development. Formula S! Mr. S. Well, that's now sitting at 35 PSI. So it's going to shut the thing off. Well, it's sitting at 35 PSI quite happily, so uh, we'll see if that holds there for a few days. Well, that's enough good news for one day on this car. Hopefully I'll be able to weld that wheel well up strongly enough that it will hold the weight of the spare wheel. Now some more good news. The Rover P6. I'm here in the Rover 2000's little hideaway hole, safe place that it lives when it's not being driven and it's been here for a few weeks and you haven't seen it for a few weeks and that's entirely my fault and I'm a little bit ashamed to say I should have got onto it sooner but I didn't. Um, basically last time I took the car out everything's going great, I was having a lovely time driving the car in you know, quite nice weather and having a good day until when I was manoeuvring it into a parking space suddenly it felt wrong in the steering. Um, it's still fine turning right but very unhappy turning left kind of heavy heavy like there's resi resistance in the maybe the steering box maybe the, maybe the steering idler box it did have a new steering idler box at the last mot so that should rule that one out i hope it doesn't need a new steering rack because that would be horrifically expensive anyway to my detriment i've been ignoring it because i figured it'd be a difficult job i didn't have time and i've been quite busy so sorry sorry car um got left but now I need it for Bromley pageant next week and I'm busy all this weekend so yeah I'm hoping this will be a very fast and ideally free repair now I did start doing this in the lockup garage where the car lives but it quickly occurred to me it's pitch dark in there so you can't see anything and the floor's covered in oil where this car's been dripping on it for the last 10 years so I brought it out here it might be windy but at least I can see what I'm doing Oh, this jack's not tall enough. I didn't go underneath the Tomcat the other day and there was a spare wheel under the back of it. I'm not going underneath this one either, but just so everyone knows, there are axle stands underneath it. Where the hell did that swarf come from? So this is the steering box and I had a look in the manual and apparently you have to remove this little plug thing here and then you can get to an adjuster screw. Because I think this needs some adjustment in either the steering box or the idler because it was okay but it did have a new idler box put in last MOT but it's not done many miles since there isn't a screw just a screw in there like I expected there to be so we'll try and take this one out so. ah there's the adjuster screw there isn't any oil in there to look at. I don't know if there should be oil in there, and that might be the reason it's very, very tight, because there's no oil in the steering box. Now, screwdriver, where are you? Now, first off, I'm gonna crank the wheel, get a feel of the weight of it. It's quite heavy, particularly on the left. So I'm gonna loosen this off, or not. Oh, God, that will not move at all. I guess I'll leave it. I'll leave that alone. But I will go and find out whether it's meant to have oil inside there or not. Okay, so I've just found a new and far more exciting problem than the stiff steering. And it would appear that this, which is the crank pulley, 
which the alternator belt runs around, is touching this lip of the um, of the chassis rail. So we can see this here. This is the lip of the chassis rail, and it is actually milling it like a lathe as it goes around. Um, this is a new and exciting problem, and one that I honestly don't know what I'm going to do about, because I can only assume it means that the entire engine has moved backwards because it wasn't doing it recently. The giveaway was I noticed some silver swarf down here and then I looked at it and saw it was grinding and I just did a quick start of the engine to have a look and I could actually hear it rubbing against it. Um, yeah, so my day just got significantly worse and I was going to be taking this for an MOT in about half an hour. I don't think I will be now. So, my plan um, as it stands, um, as this is um, filmed immediately after a few minutes ago when I was tearing a hole in the bottom of the Mercedes, I'm still going to work in about well, 20 minutes now. Um, so I need to go home, get changed. What I think I can do, or well, the engine crane is in the garage at home, buried behind the V8 Rover with no engine in it. So what I think I'll do, I'll use a bit of logic here. I, rather than buy new engine mounts, what I think I have to do, bring a Rover parts supplier and ask one of them to measure how deep those should actually be and if they're more than a millimetre or two taller than those rubbers are at the moment then I'll know that's my problem before I start taking the engine out. Although I did think I'd replaced them a couple of years ago but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I didn't. Oh well, thank you for watching, hopefully I'll have some progress for you later in the week. Um, I'll do a proper announcement later in the week but I will be at Bromley Pageant with one of my cars. Be on the hubnut stand, yeah, exclusive reveal for you. Come and say hello, come and grab a sticker, be great to meet some of you people in person for once because it's always nice talking to you on the comments, that would be amazing. Um, thank you for watching to the end, you've now had a secret that most people will have turned off and missed. Ha, good on you. Right, thanks for watching, please hit like and subscribe as always as I have to say. Um, right, without further ado, I'm going to go to work.